Hi, everybody. It's episode 357 of PodQuest. Hey. hey. Wednesday, June 16th, 2021. I am Chris. With me is Druton. Hello. And Walnut. I'm surprised you got that right, even though everything is wrong on the on the <laughs> sheet. Oh, yeah, no, no, it's all the way wrong. But I re- So I knew it was wrong because I didn't delete the part one thing today. So I'm like, okay, so we're one episode up. And I knew today was the 16th because I've typed it like 12 times for different things. So mm-hmm. there you go. Had I not done that, though, I definitely would have said today is Wednesday, June 14th again, like I did on Monday when it was actually Monday, June 14th. Well, good on you for, for remembering it. Thanks. Um, and I also I also just figured we'll just make this 357 instead of trying to do like a part A, part B. Yeah. This is just easier. It's just one more number. But anyway, yeah, we're back. We said we'd be back, and we're back. Uh, if you missed part one, which is episode 356, uh, that released on Tuesday, that is us talking about... Uh, summer, summer, or yeah, summer game fest, Gearbox, Ubisoft, Microsoft, Bethesda, and Square Enix. So most of E3, because the the breakdown kind of seemed pretty even with four and four mm-hmm. having like four four to talk about and record on Monday and four to talk about and record today. But honestly, three, two of the four for today weren't really anything. So we're not going to ha- we 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 have seemingly less to talk about today but still a decent amount to talk about. Yeah, because some of the Nintendo stuff is just kind of silly or like one of us can at least find a thing to say about it. I did include the majority of the Nintendo stuff in here. I just mm-hmm. initialed the, the things that like we are specifically interested in. Yeah. Uh but yeah, uh so like you just said, um there wasn't a whole lot for anything other than Nintendo. Um so let's just jump right into Capcom, I guess, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, Capcom. Uh, yeah, we can do Capcom. Uh, they didn't have really that great of a show. They mostly, it was, uh, hey, here's this Resident Evil thing that we talked about a few months ago when we talked about Resident Evil Village, which was our reverse, and then basically turned around and said, we didn't know you guys were going to like Village, so we didn't have anything planned, but because you guys want stuff, we're going to make DLC for yeah, pretty much. Uh, that is about as accurate as it can be. <laughs> um, yeah, like, did you watch Capcom? No, because I heard exactly what it was, and I had no interest in any of it. Yeah, yes. it was... So it was, it, luckily, it was very short. It was only 20 minutes or so of actual, like, game stuff. Um, so, like you said, Rich, it, it was Resident Evil Village, basically nothing. Um, and then they did Monster Hunter Stories, Monster Hunter Rise, Great Ace Attorney, and then it became like ten or fifteen minutes of esports, and I just turned it off at that point. Well, it was it wasn't ten or fifteen minutes of esports; it was ten or fifteen minutes of them talking about their uh, uh, Street Fighter uh, uh, thingamajig. Yeah, no, but um, they 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 talked it up as an esports segment. Um, yeah. and as soon as esports came up, I kind of checked out because I'm just not into that. Yeah. Yeah, and it it really was an esports segment. It was just them saying, "Hey, uh, we've got like a special Street Fighter community thing challenge thing." I don't really like. I I had zero interest because I'm bad at fighters, and so I just don't pay attention when fighters come along. I am mediocre at fighters if I'm fighting like another person, um, like another person I know. I should say because like if I'm fighting like a real fighting game person i'm just gonna get <laughs> fucking trounced mm-hmm. yeah um playing fighting games online is the most depressing fucking thing you can do if you're not a fighting game person <laughs> like it's just it's not fun like i was i thought i was okay at dragon ball fighters like i wasn't anything special but like i could pull off a combo and like not the auto combo um the the few rounds i tried to play of that like online i didn't even get to hit the other person yeah like it's just yeah Fighting, ga- yeah. f- fighting games are great. Fighting games online are just bad for people that don't play fighting games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then their uh, Monster Hunter coverage was shit they covered literally three weeks ago. So I have questions about Monster Hunter stories, though. I will do my best to answer them because I never played the first one. Okay. The, now, the first one was a 3DS game, right? I believe so, and it's on uh, phones. Okay, because it looks like a 3DS game. Like, Monster Hunter Stories 2, like, it does not look like a current Switch title. Yeah, Yeah, no, it was, the original Stories was, like, 3DS or something. Okay, so I feel like this game may have, like, been meant for 3DS also, and then got bumped up, and, like, 
in the middle of making it? Uh, uh, maybe. Now, since you never played the first one, you might not be able to answer this one. But what the fuck is it? Um, it's an RPG. Yeah, no, I get that. But Monster Hunter is all about murder. Like, you go around <laughs> and you fucking murder these innocent monsters and skin them for armor. Um, you savage, savage S- people. This one seems like Pokemon meets How to Train a Dragon? So, on your first point, the monsters aren't innocent. They are wreaking havoc on the ecosystem and the environment. And although, yes, I fight a Rathalos 35 times to get that one fucking Rathalos spike, you technically, in-game story, only fight it once. Like, you don't actually fight it and do a... a, 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 a like, story-wise, story it's not an actual extinction-level event when you kill every monster in the map. It's just you literally, like, you literally only technically fight these monsters once. There's a Monster Hunter manga, and when they fight... <laughs> is there a, really? There, there is, of course there and is. they fight... I believe they fight a Tigrex, and when they kill it, the person in, like, the next couple of panels or the next couple of pages has the entire armor set from killing it once, because that's... How it should be, but they needed to create a gameplay loop and make a loot system because that's how games are. Yeah, I mean, and, like, really, if you think about it, like, if you're killing, like, a smaller animal, then, like, yeah, like, you're going to need a couple of them to Mm -hmm. make something. But, like, if you're killing some of these, like, big dragon fucking things, like, there is plenty of dragon to make at least a full set of armor and a few weapons. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Totally agree. But that's why, like... In in the game, it's just a loot system. You're like, yeah. Story wise, you not you're not actually killing the same monster a hundred times. But so then, it's... why in stories are you fucking tra- catching them and trading them like fucking Pokemon cards? Different worlds. Oh, so this isn't actually supposed to be the same like universe. No, no it's, it's it's okay. It's, it's its own thing. It's a spinoff series, and it's I mean, as far as I know, it's a different world or a different region. Like, a region that doesn't fight the monsters, but works to tame them and, and, and live with them. Like, it, it's either, it's one of those two. Most likely it's just a different world. Just like in Final Fantasy. Every right. Final Fantasy game is a new world, for the most part. Okay, like, that makes a little more sense then. Yeah. And and even uh, uh, Xenoblade. Xenoblade Chronicles and Xenoblade Chronicles X are two separate universes. Yes, yeah, true. Um, so I, I didn't realize that was how they played this mm-hmm. because I just yeah. don't, I don't really know anything about it. It just seemed very weird that like in this game, you're making friends with them and like fighting with them. And in the other mm-hmm. games, you're literally just going around and slaughtering entire species. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, they, <laughs> every, every Monster Hunter game for the most part, probably with the exception of stories, uh, like with the, the two different stories games, every Monster Hunter game takes place in a different region in a different setting in a different style. I remember so, you saying that before, like, that, like, they were all in the same, like, universe, but they were just, like, different parts of the world and different yeah, continents so, and stuff. So, like, if the best way to put it is Monster Hunter Generations was that it wasn't Generations because it was bridging the gap between the Wii U and the Switch or or, or the Wii U and the uh, um, PS5. It was Generations because the four towns that you travel amongst are the four main towns of a lot of the of some of the games. So you it's the different generations of monsters and the different generations of towns and each setting was different. Okay. Okay. So I'm also going to throw out there that you said a couple times that you thought I might like the stories games because they're RPGs and I I'm into those. Um having like I normally kind of gloss over when they got to the Monster Hunter stuff because like I'm just not into Monster Hunter. Mm-hmm. I paid attention to this trailer. Um, at one point, so first off, it has bad voice acting, like very bad voice acting, like Xenoblade Chronicles 2 levels of bad voice it's, acting. Uh, it's a Cap- Capcom game. Yeah, which I can't wrap my head around why Switch console exclusives seem to get like, I, they're not bad voice actors per se, like they're doing their job, like it's it's how they're being directed to do their voices, but like... Mm-hmm. How do they get such bad voice acting on these games? Whereas, like, you go to... Like, there are indie games with voice act. Like, look at fucking Hades. Mm, Hades yeah. had phenomenal voice acting. Yeah. I mean, and, I I was gonna say, it's like, it's the Japanese, and, and, and it's the Japanese, uh, like, the, their choice. But then you look at, like, Final Fantasy games, which tend to have pretty decent voice acting, with the exception of this fucking demo. 
Um, <laughs> we'll get to that later. Um, yeah, but we'll get to that later. You know what, though? That's true, because these games are so big in Japan. I wonder if they're just not putting the budget into the localization. Like, and it's it's also probably, like, voice acting and stuff is new to the Monster Hunter series. Uh, there's never actually been voice acting in any of them besides World. And story is not a thing that people generally care about in Monster Hunter. And it's funny, because, like, the little bit of World I played, like... It was the voice acting was fine. It it was mm-hmm. you know it was kind of like right in like the the middle grade of voice acting. Like yeah, it I I wouldn't expect them to win awards like like uh, yeah. Ghost of Tsushima or Last of Us, but like it wasn't anything that I thought about. I'm like man, that's not good. Yeah, I mean I also <laughs> I tend if I whenever I get the choice I tend to not play with English voice acting. Oh, see, I, I always play, do English voice acting it, so that I can pay attention to the game and not read. I, I mean, I'm I'm used to reading subtitles, but there is they have their own quote language for the Monster Hunter world, and so that's usually what I have them in. Oh, okay. Yeah, so like I don't really pay attention to the voice acting that much, and like the voice acting for Monster Hunter Rise also not good. Like they have like situations and, uh, and instances where like your character will speak out while fighting, and I've heard some of it, and I'm just like, this is not good. And it's like they just, yeah, they they don't use the budget to find the good voice actors. They just get those generic, pretty much, they probably hire the Getty images of voice acting. <laughs> but see, that's the thing. Like, I don't think it's necessarily bad voice actors. Because that, that, it is a hard job. Like, you might think it's just going in and reading lines. But, like, mm-hmm. there's a lot to voice acting. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you have, like, a good voice actor has to be able to, put, like, convey whatever emotion is going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For a fucking cartoon. Like that's yeah. tough. Um, and like, like I'm using Xenoblade Chronicles two as an example because like three quarters of that cast, like the voice acting wasn't very good. They, I don't know that they were fake British accents, but a lot of them just sounded <laughs> like imitation British accents. Yeah. Um, like the the few characters that actually sounded good were the ones that didn't have accents. Mm-hmm. Um, and in in most cases they were the villains. Like the only. The only good people that I can think of that had like good voice acting that spoke a lot was Pyra Mithra, like the the main character that like switched between the redhead and the blonde. Yeah, like sh- she was two different voice actresses and like like delivered her lines well throughout the whole thing. It, it's it it could be like in part the voice actor could be in part the direction, but it could also just be scripting. Yeah, well that's what I'm thinking. And, like, and scripting and direction make a have yeah. a big impact on that too. Um, speaking of like localization, though, uh, the th- the thing that stood out to me with some of this dialogue too is apparently they are fighting with the power of friendship to bring together the monsties. M O N S T I E S. Yeah, it's there. It's yeah. It's that's what they call like the monster buddies. They're monsters. That line was what kind of like. All right, nope, these aren't for me. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm gonna walk the other way now. I mean, Pokemon, you, you use the power of friendship to fight with your Pokemon. That's only in the fucking anime. You you don't have to be friends with them in the fucking video games. You should be. I mean, not if you a do... terrible person. Already. Weren't you just telling me the other day that next time you play a Pokemon game, you're going to do a Nuzlocke run? Or is that yeah, somebody probably. else? probably. No, that was me. No, yeah, which, was... which is basically just, all right, I'm going to capture you. The first time you fuck up, you're just dead. Y- yeah, the first time you die, you're dead. Um... But as far as stories goes, anyway, uh, I don't, Rich. I don't know if you know about this or if you were going to check it out. Uh, there is a trial, like a demo of it, that'll yeah. be available on June twenty fifth, and your progress will carry over to the main game. Yeah, so it's the intro of the game. A lot of games have been doing that lately, um, so I, I, I probably will check it out. Um, but I like this game isn't high on my radar of games to get, but it is a game I'm interested in. I heard stories was good, so okay. I want to. I want to check this this one out. At least you can try the demo for free and just kind of see what it's what it's all about. Yeah. Um. Th- they did go over some rise stuff, but I feel like the rise stuff we we were talking about a little bit before Drew got on. Like it it wasn't anything more than you already knew from their live stream a couple weeks ago. Literally, all of their Monster Hunter stuff was stuff they had already previously announced. Oh, th- so had they previously announced the um like the story save data armor set and everything? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I I believe they also previously announced the demo for stories too. Like, oh okay, every, th- nice. that's why a majority of this sh- of this Capcom show didn't need to happen because they announced it three weeks. Ago. Good on Capcom. Uh, yeah. so there was something exciting announced at this thing. Well, not even announced, just talked about. Um, the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. No, I mean I liked the first Phoenix Wright game. 
That's like the only one I've played, though. Because <laughs> those games are great, and this one is set in the 1800s, and it's in. I believe that um the, the it's two different games. I think it's Great Ace Attorney Adventures and then Great Ace Attorney Two Resolve. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's they were Japan only games. I think they were might have been like Wii U game. I should have looked this up ahead of time. Uh but yeah, they were only available in Japan for whatever silly reason. Um, okay, so 2015, so they would have been Wii U. No, 3DS. They were 3DS games. Fuck me, I was wrong. Uh, but yeah, it's Great Ace Attorney Adventures and then Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. Um, the first one came out in 2015. The second one came out in 2017. They're be- getting both put together, being released next month on the Switch. Um, so you play Phoenix Wright's Ancestor, um, who has a name I can't pronounce. <laughs> Isn't it like Hemlock Holmes or something like that? No, no, that's a different character. So um, the, the character that you're playing is... Ryonosuke Naruhodo, I'm going to okay. go with. Um, there is a character in it who is like a... It, so it's Herlock Schl- Sholmes. Sholmes. <laughs> um, who is like... <laughs> I'm trying to think of a character because like, he, he's like a character that like I I picture in my head, but I can't think of like a name for him. He's like the... He's, a, he's not a bumbling detective, but he thinks he is better than he is and jumps to the wrong conclusions. Mm-hmm. So like you're kind of there with him and he's like, you... This person is this guy, and then you have to sit there and like actually investigate the scene and figure out who it really is. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so it it's got all the like the normal like Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney gameplay. You you investigate things. There's trial stuff. Um. They've added some like I only play ever played the first three Phoenix Wright games, so I never played like Apollo Justice or the Miles Edgeworth games or any of those. Mm-hmm. But I don't remember any of them ever having a jury. No, I I I don't think they ever have. So and this this is this one takes place in the UK, which kind of makes sense as to why there's a jury. Like I don't know the Japanese uh, system of 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 what's the word judicial Law. system. <laughs> the, yeah, I don't know the Japanese uh, judicial system, but it seems to be that like from things I've seen, like it's, usu- it's there's usually just a judge. Yeah, which is totally possible. I don't know either. Um, I want to play that game Judgment at some point though, so maybe I'll find out. Because that's what that is. I believe you're like a prosecutor or defender or something like that in that game. Uh, but yeah, so there's a jury in this one that instead of you having to like convince the judge of everything, you have to convince the jurors. And as you convince them, their like background goes from black to white. And then they literally send a fireball to the scales of justice to weigh them in your favor. Uh, I just looked it up. Japan belongs to an inquisitory system of criminal process, which means a judge oversees proceedings and determines guilt. Okay. That's... So yeah, that's that's why in the Phoenix Wright games, there's no jury, is because it takes place in Japan, whereas this one is taking place in the UK, which is they have like jury. Which I, that that yeah. makes sense. Uh, but yeah, if you like the Ace Attorney games, like the Phoenix Wright or or what have you, like this is more of those, and they're a little more modern than the the old games were. So that's always fun. Uh- I like the idea of having to try to win over the jurors instead of just like I don't. It makes me feel like there's a level of checks and balances, and not just I have to get every answer right. Yeah, and I feel like there is probably still some like I doubt it is actually any sort of like telltale like your deci- your choices have actual repercussions thing. As mm-hmm. much as it is still, you know, making the right argument, showing the right evidence to convince the jurors as you go along. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like it. It looks like the jurors will have... So I don't remember them showing, like, any actual, um... Uh, uh, fuck. What are those things called when somebody comes up to testify? Oh, well... Like, what is that person called when they're testifying? Witnesses. Witnesses? Witness? Yes, thank you. Man, we're all... I mean, Drew, you haven't fucked up yet, but the rest of us are not doing great with words involving, like, the law. Um, they didn't show, like, the witness side of it that I remember... But, like, the, the jurors were, like, being kind of animated about it. Be like, oh, yeah, they must have done this and that and this other thing. And you have mm-hmm. to, like, dissuade them of their preconceived yeah. notions. Yeah, and I don't know, like, I didn't pay enough attention to know whether or not it has to be an, a unanimous decision or if it's just a majority decision. I don't so, think they went into that in the yeah. actual Capcom thing. Yeah, so, like, if it's a majority system, to me, that's a better system than previous Phoenix Wright games. Because you can get some things wrong, but still win. Whereas in previous ones, you just have to pick the right answer all the time. You need 100% in previous ones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it it's not even so much 100% as much as it's just, 
these are the switches you have to s- flip in mm-hmm. order to move along. Yeah. Like, until you hit those things, you're just going to keep going in circles. Unless yeah. you make active blunders, then you might get a game over. Yeah, exactly. Um, But yeah, this comes out on July 27th, so just later next month, which I'm excited for. Um, It'll be on Switch, PS4, Xbox, maybe? No, PS4 and Windows. Switch, PS4, mm-hmm. Windows. So, yeah, they're good games. Uh, So, Nintendo. Nintendo, to me, had a lot to show. And shockingly, the first thing they showed didn't take half the show, which was nice. Yeah, that was actually super unexpected. But uh, they showed the second-to-last Smash character, which is Kazuya from Tekken. Uh, so yeah. we're finally... Guys... Sorry, go ahead. Are you guys happy that it's not a sword guy? I mean, yes. <laughs> but it's also kind of funny. Like They're kind of like loading the game with fighting characters now, which I find amusing. I don't have a problem with it. I just find it amusing. Uh, and it, there's finally a Street Fighter vs. Tekken. <laughs> Yeah, but it's also Street Fighter vs. Tekken vs. SNK, right? Is yeah, that, is yeah, that, is that yeah, yeah. Because yeah, Ter- Terry's name? in it. Yeah, yeah. Man, Terry's fine. Stop being a baby. It's just his name. His name. I don't like his name. He's Terry's stupid name. Terry Bogart is a stupid name. You're a stupid name. I, you know what? Sure. <laughs> there, your name has too many different forms. It does. And like some of them don't make sense. Like Rick and Dick don't don't make sense to Richard. I. It's, Somebody was know. drunk. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think I looked up the origin of why you get dick from Richard, but I can't <laughs> remember what it was. I'm not going to look it up that way anymore. <laughs> but I do remember, like, looking up the origin of, of why that name comes from the other. And it was something stupid. Oh, but I just, I can't remember what it was. I believe that. Uh, but yes, uh, Kazuya is the character. Um, he had maybe my favorite video like introduction just of him just throwing characters into, into the volcano, volcano. <laughs> yeah. yeah so rich you probably i don't you probably don't know a lot of tekken lore um no. that's a thing from tekken um i forget the like the whole roundabout thing of it but he had to like throw somebody into a volcano in the in okay. the, like the game's lore so okay. him fighting somebody and then throwing them into a vo- volcano was very like on brand for that franchise and the fact that he did it to just all of the characters basically yeah, I love mm. that he started with Ganon and then he ended with Kirby and Kirby flew away. Yeah. Yeah. I also liked when it, when it was the arms character and the arm was wrapped around his foot and he just kind of like shook it off and kicked it off the side anyway. I missed that. I must not have been paying too much attention at that point. It was during like a little montage where it was just showing him holding like the bodies as he was like slowly dropping it in. The last one was the arms character. Okay. Okay. Uh so yeah, this, that was that was up front. Um they did not spend a lot of time on it. They they went into it later after during the treehouse. Um, yeah, and uh, what's his name? The creator of Sakurai. Uh, Smash Sakurai. He's gonna have a whole video about Kazuya on the twenty fourth, I believe. I can't remember, but he's gonna have a whole thing introducing Kazuya. Okay. So like, th- they didn't spend forty five minutes on one character. They spent five minutes, and they're gonna spend another half hour down the line. Which like that seems reasonable to me. It- and that's usually what they do with new character announcements. They'll announce the character somewhere and then down the line say that he's going to like do an intro to the character and show you how they play. Uh, and they even straight up said in the, the, the um, uh, direct that they haven't even filmed his, the, 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 the thing yet, so they still have to film it. Oh, okay. I, I missed that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to be honest. Like After the actual video, when it went to Sakurai, I kind of checked out a little bit because I was doing some other stuff. Mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. Like I saw the character, I saw the silly video, and like that was really all I needed to see. Yeah, and... I watched. I watched the Switch Direct during lunch, so I was able to. I mean, I did too. I watched it while it was airing, but like I literally just got distracted by something else because, like, I expected it to go on because the last few characters they've just kind of drug on and on in these things. Actually, that's right. I didn't watch it while at lunch, but I watched it while running automatic scripts for work, so that I <laughs> don't have to pay attention. Nice. Um, they also this was this was exciting. Uh, they have no information on Metroid Prime 4. Um, they just came out and told us, like, that game is still in development. Mm-hmm. We're never going to see it, though. But we're getting Metroid 5. Yeah. Which, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of surprised, but then I forgot that Metroid Other M was a third-party team. Third-party was... team and not really, like, a, a traditional Metroid game either. Mm-hmm. Well, it was side-scrolling, but there were times that you could go first-person, because it, it was a Wii game, so, like, it had the multi- tier controls on it or something but it was primarily side scroller 
but it was a Team Ninja game, and I forgot that it was a Team Ninja game. Okay. Which is why I thought, like, oh, well, why did they say first side-scrolling Metroid in 19 years, but we had fucking, uh, um... Other M 10 other years M. ago. Like, yeah. 11 years ago, something like that. Uh, but yeah, so I went through and I, I had to double check this. I looked at the, at like the Metroid timeline. So the games, cause they're not all numbered. So it's Metroid, Metroid ter- 2, Samus Returns, or Return of Samus. I forget w- what order that goes in. But that was on the Game Boy. So we have Nintendo, Game Boy. Then we have Super Metroid on the Super Nintendo. That was Metroid 3. Metroid f- 4 is Metroid Fusion on the GBA from 2002. Yeah. And then Metroid 5 is this one that they're calling Metroid Dread, which is coming to Switch. Yeah. 19 years after Metroid Fusion. I I, I was getting scared while watching it because I thought they were making a Metroid Runner. I'll, so I, f- I forget what stream I was. I was watching the Nextlander stream, I, like the talk over for it. And that's one one of them said that. I think it was one of the Waypoint guys is actually said, like, are they mach- making a Metroid Runner? Yeah, like the the, the way the trailer was cut. And the, and and everything was cut. I was like, "Is this a fucking runner?" Like they did good with Mario Run, but please don't tell me this is a Metroid Runner. And then it turns into an actual side-scrolling Metroid game. Thank you. Yeah, and I like that. So in Metroid Fusion, I don't. Did, did you guys ever play that one? No. So I I, I think I watched kind of somehow watched Eric play it, or like I just don't like know. hovering over his shoulder while he's playing on his or GBA. or he <laughs> talked to me about it. Like I know I know that like. Your suit did kind of carry over, or maybe that was a different Metroid game. Or like- so, the, so the, the suit is actually what I was going to say. In that one, I forget exactly what happens, but your suit like has to get fused with like Metroid or something like that, like a Metroid. Um, that's why it's called F- Metroid Fusion, and your suit looks different in that one. Mm-hmm. It does, um, and it's got like a little bit more of a organic look to it, uh, and it looks like. M- that might not be exactly the same suit, but it looks like they're they're carrying over at least like the fact that your suit is different now. Yeah. Um or it could it could be the same suit and it's just, you know, twenty years later and higher definition makes it stand like, like makes the colors stand out more. Yeah. Either way though, it, it looks good. Uh, I'm not great at Metroid games, but I really like them. Mm-hmm. I don't know I don't know if you guys plan on, on playing this one or not. I I especially with the release date uh in October. I think I'll definitely have time to be able to get it when it comes out. Um, I this I I still I don't know if this is going to be a for sure like release purchase, but it is something that I am interested. In. That's fair. That is fair. Uh, no, Drew. Next one's for you. Hundred percent Mario Party Superstars. Oh yeah, totally super duper interested in this. <laughs> October 29th, You only got a few months to wait. I got, I got to start start practicing on my Mario Party mini games. Yeah, you just gotta you, you gotta just get that dexterity built up in your wrist and fingers. Like like do those like roll your wrist a lot, like bend your fingers in and out, press buttons really quickly. <laughs> I mean th- that's all just general mini game stuff. Like any any mini game in any any fucking franchise. Like at some point you're gonna have to press a button really quickly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, the, the this is it's not a new Mario Party, but it's a greatest hits of mini games, and then ra- was it. Was it the Switch one or was it a 3DS one that was just mini games? It was like That's the hundred best one. mini games. Yeah. Okay, that was a 3DS one. So it's got it's got that concept, but it's actually putting five classic boards from the N64 games into it. So it'll still have the actual Mario Party board game part. Mm-hmm. Um, they do say that it'll support controllers, so you won't have to do motion and stuff like that if you have like a Switch Lite. And I'm, I don't. I've played the Switch Mario Party. I don't think they have motion. I think they have a couple, but I think you might be able to turn them off. Yeah, it, like if they do, they're very minimal. Or there's a way they they're both motion slash controller. So like, yeah, it's so like that doesn't doesn't surprise me. Um, it's also going to have online play for random matchmaking, and it sounds like you'll be able to play online with friends also, which I think they didn't have working for the current Switch Mario Party. No, it's there. I, what I game think did... it wasn't there at launch. Oh, is that what it is? Because wasn't there a game that you couldn't play with friends, you could only do random matchmaking? I feel like it was the Mario Party, because it was like, why I... the fuck would you want to do this? Yeah, like, I, I I know it's there now. I don't know if it wasn't at launch. I just know it's there now. Okay, so it's going to have random matchmaking, but you'll also have the ability to play with friends, like, out the box on the day on the day it launches. Um, 
Rich, I don't know if they have this, though. You're going to be able to save your progress mid-game. So, like, if you're playing with somebody and you guys have to stop, um, you can save it and actually come back to it later. Yeah, I, I don't know. I I ha- I don't have the current Switch Mario Party. Uh, I've just, I've played it at Friends, and I've heard Friends say that they played it online with other friends. I don't know if it has that save progression. That is cool, because some of those maps can take a long time. Or you could just decide to open up, like, a really long map and just play it from time to time, play a couple rounds, and then give up. That's fair. Yeah. Um, Super Monkey Ball Rich. Talk about it. Bro, when I saw that, I was so excited. I fucking love Super Monkey Ball. I might not be that great at it, but I just, I love Super Monkey Ball. Like, I, I think- It's no it, Ape Escape. No, it's not Ape Escape, but it's, it's a completely, just because it's monkeys doesn't mean it has to be Ape Escape. <laughs> like, it's a completely different kind of game, and like, I don't know, it was just, the original is so, or not the original, but I think it was the GameCube one. That is the original. Uh, I, I guess so, I guess that is the original. Uh, yeah. Um, it was so stupid, because like, the monkeys are superheroes, and their superpower is to be surrounded by these monkey ball by these balls and i don't know it's the dumbest but coolest thing in the world and just super monkey ball is so fun that like when they when they started showing that i was like oh is this a new monkey ball no it's like a 20th anniversary thing it's uh called uh banana uh banana Banana mania Mania. it is um you can buy each game separately i believe it's five games or no i think it's just the first two games that they're doing no it's unless it was a different thing that they were showing but I believe it's Monkey Ball, you can buy physically all of them in one collection or each game separately I on think digital media. You're getting Monkey Ball confused with Danganronpa. Okay, maybe. Because that, that is actually exactly what Danganronpa is. Okay. Um, this one, I, I was just skimming back through the article. Um, Super Monkey Ball, it's the first two Super Monkey Ball games. Um, it's their 20th anniversary, so it's like a remaster of them. And they're going to be in one collection called Banana Mania. Okay. Were there five Super Monkey Ball games? I I could have swore there was more Super Monkey Balls like shown on the screen than just two. There, it's three. It's Super Monkey Ball, Super Monkey Ball Two, and Super Monkey Ball Deluxe. Okay, that's fair. Oh yeah, no, I just found the Wikipedia page for it. Okay, so it's it's up to 2005 is is the the three games 300 stages jesus that's a lot mm-hmm. that's a lot of monkey ball uh this is also coming to everything like it's not just mm-hmm. a switch game i know i was never really into super monkey ball so i don't really know what the the goal or anything is it's it's uh it's an arcade game uh you are these monkeys in balls uh and it's you have to like roll down the hill and it's like try to do it without falling off the stage and stuff and collect the bananas. It's it's an arcade score runner game. Like Oh, know. I I remember what these are now. That's and on the bombcast they mentioned that the original arcade cabinet you had a banana was the controller. Yeah. Um a banana. And, it's, uh, there's a lot of them now that have just the trackball. Yeah, which it makes a lot more sense now when somebody somebody spoke up when I think Jeff asked if anyone knows what it was and they said trackball. I understand now why they said trackball. I remember these games better now. They were never yeah. my, like they were never my thing, but I remember them. I I was I loved the GameCube one. I think I had the first and second one at least. Um, and it's just like they could be challenging, mm-hmm. but they could just also be so fun. They're really cool to watch people break the fuck out of them in speedruns mm-hmm. because boy, yeah. some people are really fucking good at that game. Because because they do they do the stuff like in uh. In Mario 64, when you're doing the ice thing, you can just jump off the one part to fall all the way down. Like, mm-hmm. people can find ways to do that to get to the very end and like that. Which is, like, that stuff's always really cool. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you think you're going to pick this up, Rich, on October 5th? Uh, see, th- th- this, that's the problem I'm going to keep like, asking you this question to see how many of these games you say, yeah, maybe. We're, we're, it's like, because we got, we, got, we got Metroid on the 8th, and we've got Monkey Ball on the 5th. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. I I might not. It depends on where money is and how I am with gaming and and shit like that. It's there's there's a lot a lot to go into whether or not I'm gonna buy it. It's weird that this game comes out on Tuesday. Like Nintendo is historic. Oh no, you know what? Never mind. Because it's not. It's just a Nintendo it, game. Yeah, it's not a Nintendo game. That makes more mm-hmm. sense now. I yeah. take back what I was starting to well, say. I, yeah, I mean, because it's Metroid comes out on the eighth, which is a few days later. So. Well, it's Friday. Nintendo games historically drop on Friday. Yeah. 
Uh, what was next? Drew, you going to get it together with WarioWare? I mean, maybe. It looked pretty neat. It, and it's interesting that they're like actually making the characters in WarioWare matter. Yeah, like, which is just super weird, but interesting. Yeah, because they've never really made, mattered what character you are. But now they're going to do things slightly different in some of the mini games, which is kind of neat. Like, yeah, like they, they were showing on the thing, like the, the mini game right to knock the apples out of the tree. Like some characters can float and fly and can just knock them down. Others have to like hit the tree branches from underneath to knock them down. Mm-hmm. I, I like that concept because it like you, you can pick your favorite character and f- figure out a strategy. Like if you're playing multiplayer, like you got to figure out your strategy for your favorite character. order. Mm-hmm. And they, they called it co-op. So I don't know that you're competing necessarily in any of them. I, it. It sounds like you might both be. be trying. Well, yeah, there that's better true. be a competitive mode as well. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I mean, say. I would, I would hope because that I, that's sort of what those games are made for. I, I think wasn't the original like a turn-based uh, thing where like you go until you die, and then the other person goes until they die, and then it just jumps back and forth. There... I don't think the original had multiplayer. Uh, well, if the original was a GBA game, right? Yeah, that's why I don't think that one had multiplayer. Oh no, it did. It did, in fact, have multiplayer. Did it have? A I link never cable? played it. Or did it have like? Was it pass and play, or was it link cable? Oh, uh, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Because uh... like the GameCube one definitely had multiple different modes. Where I, I forget if it was always you went to, or there, I forget if there was a mode where you went till you failed, or if they were all literally just you pass whether or not you succeeded or failed you pass the controller to the next person but i think there's also some modes where it's random who's going so it could go one person like you could have four people playing it go person a person b person a person d person c person a like it's not a b c d all the time okay that makes sense um yeah the wikipedia article doesn't really say what sort of multiplayer it is so i'm not sure okay but i didn't realize that original game was from 2003 wow it was Nintendo R and D one made it. They make a lot of games. They do. Uh da da da. Oh, I didn't realize they were. De- I forgot they they got rid of them. Like that, they're no longer named that. I forget what they became. But huh. oh, they became Software Planning and Development. Okay. In two thousand four, it looks like. But uh, anyway, yeah. So Wario, I, those Wario Wear games are fun for mm-hmm. what they are. Like they're they're quick little micro games. You can c- just kind of race through them. And a lot of them are usually interesting. Like, uh, I saw in this one, there's one where you have to, like, peel a face mask off of somebody. Mm-hmm. And that just seems weird and fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also like when they use, like, other NES or other Nintendo games for the basis for a mini game. Yeah, like, I remember, like, the, ori- the original one on GBA had, like, the Legend of Zelda level. Mm-hmm. Like, where you literally just had to, like, I think you had to, like, slash something or walk into a door or something. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that'll be out on September 10th. So that one's... Might be one of the soonest to release? Uh, I think so. It looks like it. Um, And we finally get to see a little bit more from Shin, Meg- Shin Megami Tensai V. I, th- this game looks really cool. Like, I've never played a Shin Megami Tensai, like, base game. Like, I've played, um, uh, like, the, the, what's the other game called? Persona? Um, Personas. But I've never played just a straight up Shin Megami Tensei game. And this game just, I, I don't know, I I was like so into it the second it started yeah i have to go back and look i was under the impression that like the main series numbered games were more like dungeon crawler first person whereas this one looked more in line with what like the persona games have become since three Hmm. i i think they just they they change they just generally change well so i've never i i have also never played one of like the the core games but like because there's a bunch of different spin-offs like you have your 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 Shin, Shin Megami Tensai games, and then you have, like, your Digital Devil Summoner, your Nocturne, your Persona, all those, like, spin-offs that are, like, underneath the umbrella that mm-hmm. all have, like, slightly different gameplay, but they share sim- similar elements. Um, but I'm pretty sure most of, like, the baseline games historically have always been first-person, like, dungeon crawlers. So, like, mm-hmm. I, I'm not against them changing it up. I just, I want to go in and actually find out if that's the case or not. I'm trying to go through. I, I looked up Shin Megami Tensei, and it brought me to the original game's wiki. And I'm trying to go through and figure out its gameplay style. Uh, genre RPG. Oh, yeah, no, no. I'm sorry. Like, I was saying first person, and you probably assumed I meant, like, a shooter or, like, a slasher. No, like, it's just the exploration, I believe, was first person. Like, 
when you found like a fight, like it became like a turn based battle. But I'll have to I'll dig into that later and, and find out if I'm just totally mistaken or maybe maybe what I'm thinking of is actually one of the spinoffs and not the main series because <laughs> they're like that whole franchise just has so many like offshoots and stuff and it's been around since the 80s. Mm-hmm. The first game is on fucking like every. Yeah, it's been re-released a bunch <laughs> of times. <laughs> like the listed... oh, digital devil story or like yeah. the first like okay. Yeah, that one has been all over the place. Nope. I, uh, yeah, uh, in Shin Megami Tensei, players take the role of an unnamed protagonist, teenage boy who can communicate with demons in computer program. Gameplay is similar to that of other games in the series. Players make their way through dungeons and fight against demons in a first person perspective, so you're right. Okay. So yeah, it looks like they, they might have changed it up with this one, which isn't a bad thing. Um, and I know, like, Nocturne was is also a very popular one that was number three in the series proper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I remember and that seeing one... that working at GameStop. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I remember that that thing, like, we had tons of those used. Mm-hmm. Um, but that one just either just got a re-release or is getting one soon. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it came out on, like, everything. But, like, I, I love the monsters in, in the Shin Megami Tensei games. I love that Jack Frost is in, in, in this trailer. And... Yeah, Jack Frost and Pixie and stuff are, are always yeah. in them. And it's just, like, the this game just really looked good, in my opinion. And I was just like, God, I think I want to get this right away. Yeah, and Nocturne just released in the U.S. and other territories on May 25th, so. Oh, okay. But, Rich, you should get it. I I might I mean it's it's a month after uh, uh Metroid so maybe we'll see what happens. And you don't really dip into RPGs too much, like not those kind at least. I mean, no, yes and no. Like you always express interest in them, but you normally end up like putting them off because they end up being such time commitments. Well, yeah, like I, it's with Persona for sure, but like a lot of like the super Japanese like. Games like Shin Megami and Astral Chain, and what, what was that demo that we played two weeks or last week? Um, oh, um, fucking, I don't even yeah, remember. I don't remember what it was called. I, I can't remember what it was called. But like a lot of those games that like tend to be super Japanese, I'm like, I really want to get into. But yeah, I do know they're going to be time sinks. But like the unfortunate thing is, I also know that they're going to go on sale relatively soon after they come out, and that's one of the main reasons why I don't get it. Right. Like Atlas Games tend to go on sale pretty damn quickly. So, like, that's why I never got Astral Chains. Because I was like, I was, it'll go on. And, like, so that one's more, that one's a platinum game, so it's more of, like, an action RPG. I meant, like, sort of, like, these just, like, very story-driven, like... Yeah. You're spending more time reading cutscenes than you are, like, doing anything else. Yeah. Yeah, I... I, I mean, I try to play them, but... Yeah, I, I, the last time I played, like, a JRPG was Final Fantasy XV. And even that was, like definitely like pushing further away from the jrpg-ness that yeah. like people really like yeah associate i, I yeah, still I think mean, you would really like persona 5 it's just it's a time commitment that like you would rather put in a monster hunter well it's not even rather put in a monster hunter it's just a time commitment in general that at the time when i did have time to sink i didn't have that much time like i i had a few weeks before monster hunter came out and it was like well i don't have like i had two weeks and i'm like i don't think I ha- i'll have the time to beat persona in the in my gameplay style by uh a by the time monster hunter you know what you do you start streaming persona two hours a night every night you'll be done in no time <laughs> uh, uh, by no time you mean like two years right nah it'll, it's like you'll... two months every night two hours a night it's 120 hours over two months <laughs> uh, i mean if my streamers if my one viewer wants to watch that sure i think i am usually your one viewer because i pop in and out to see what you're playing um so I was, no. i'm saying yes do it when when you were in yesterday, I had two viewers. Oh, see, so, it, it only showed me one viewer still. Uh, it showed me two viewers, uh, unless you watched the entire time. Cause no, I ten- I, no, I just I I kind of like dipped in and out to see how you were doing with the demo. Yeah. I don't know. It's the, the I the it tells me I have one view the entire time. Man, you need to get better at viewers. You don't. Look, I just started. Do you have I know. I'm just kidding. Your stream up like on your phone to watch the chat. Well, I have the stream manager. I don't have the stream itself. Like, so like you, you can open up Twitch and hold your uh on on your phone. You can open up Twitch and hold your uh uh icon, and it'll open to your stream manager. Okay. And just show you your chat, how long you've been playing, how many people are viewing, and stuff. And gotcha. like I I was in that for a while yesterday, and it said I had zero. So it wasn't it. It's not that. Okay. It's, I I get one person every time I jump on. <laughs> 
Yeah, because anytime I jump in, it always says one. So I just assume it's counting just me. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, who knows? Maybe you'll maybe you'll get into into Shin Megami Tensei, and that'll get you into Persona. Yeah, like I, I'm definitely into Persona. It's just the, I know how much of a time sink those are. I, there's only certain kinds of games that I really like the time sinks. Uh, but I do want to get back into JRPGs. It'll just with with what we saw in um uh uh Microsoft's. With a couple of those games, I think it was Microsoft's, and then uh, with with Shin Megami, I'm I'm likely going to be getting more and more into. Oh, uh, you're are you thinking of those um Suikoden esque yes. games? The Suikoden games, yeah. The e- Erudian or something like that. Yes. I, I already forget what they were called, but yeah. I know what you're talking about. Uh, so just very quickly, did either of you guys expect to see fucking Guardians of the Galaxy on the Nintendo Switch? No. Well, um, no. It's but, the cloud version. Yeah, it's a stream version. Kind of like what they did for uh, Control. Control. It was I, just, I saw that pop up, and like, like no. No, they're not going to try and put that game on the Switch. Everyone's, your Switch is going to burn out and die. Yeah. I, I saw it, I was like, really? Wow. Okay. That's that's pretty big. Uh, I didn't realize that it was the cloud version, but I just, I, I, I didn't think anything of it. I was just like, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, it, it's just so you can only play it while connected to the internet. But it's yeah, it's also still a full priced game, so like you're kind of taking a chance that it'll just be available and run well. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of it's kind of like investing in Stadia. Like you're just, you're you're taking a chance that Google's not going to shut that shit down. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we may finally be out of Wii U games that are locked on it. Uh, they announced that Fatal Frame made into the Blackwater, which nobody really liked on the Wii U. Is coming to Switch. Um, have either of you guys ever pl- pl- ever played a Fatal Frame game? I nope. played the demo of Fatal Frame when it was on like the PS2. Like, okay, it's just I, I, it's a neat concept, like the survival horror, taking pictures of ghosts type shit. But like, I've never actually gotten into them. Yeah, neither have I. But it did always seem like it could be interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to point out that like that might be one of the last Wii U exclusives. That's been locked on the Wii U because mm-hmm. we have uh the the Skyward Sword. Oh no, Skyward Sword was a Wii game. Never mind. Fuck that. I was wrong. Never mind. <laughs> uh, Advance Wars remastered. Everyone's excited for this. Yeah, uh, I loved Advance Wars on the on the GBA. Um, I like, and we all love tactical games, so it like kind of just fits all of our like uh interests. But like when they said that they were doing the remastered for one and two, like I kind of was hoping for a new one. I think they have like made like something similar to it since. There's been a very long time since Nintendo released an Advance Wars game. Well, like I think they've released something similar to Advance Wars, not called Advance Wars, because like the reason it was called Advance Wars because it's on the GBA, the Game Boy Advance. Like I think I don't know. Um, but like these games are were always super fun. It's the war tactical style. They they took a different take on things with it being um like like it was in my recollection it was the first game to take your one unit to be like a full trooper. So if you're running around with a gunner, you have like ten gun. And I was just like this. I I loved those games, and for them to remaster them, I'm like, all right, this is cool. This is something I could get on my Wii or on my Switch, not on my Wii. Yeah, yeah. You could probably you can actually get them on the Wii too. Probably, probably. They were part. Oh no, you can't anymore because they, they shut down the virtual console. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, I've actually never played Advanced Wars though. No. Um, I didn't realize I liked tactical games outside of Final Fantasy Tactics. Um, until like the late 2010s or the, like the early 20, the late 2000s, early 2010s. Okay. So yeah, like this is actually like all new to me. So I'm actually I'm excited for it because I know yeah. people love these games and Nintendo said that they've been reimagined and rebuilt from the ground up um for the Switch with enhanced graphics and controls. Yeah, which I mean the originals were Game Boy Advance, so they weren't like they were all like 2D top down uh based on the trailers and what they were showing for on the direct. These are more like a uh, sort of like isometric 3D kind of view point. Yeah. Um and it's like th- this is one of the first games that I can re- tactical games that I can remember that had a multiplayer um, PvP, which is one of the things I liked about. It. Yeah, and this one will have four player online play also. Oh, that's cool. Which, that's awesome. 
just four four divisions attacking each other, that'd be great. Yeah, and I I, I didn't I don't know if there's like any like combinations to that, like if it's like four v four or not. I'm sorry, not four v four. Like you said, Rich, like all out, like one v one, exactly. Or if you can like do like two v two or anything like that. Do you know that series started on the fucking Famicom? Did it really? Yeah. Oh wow! So then it, it probably isn't called Advance Wars because it's on a Game Boy. Advance. No, that is why the Game Boy Advance versions are called Advanced Wars because oh, really? the original game is Famicom Wars. Oh. Like oh, the, okay. the series is the Wars series. So has there been anything since the Advanced Wars? Games? Um, there were some DS games. There was Advanced Wars Dual Strike was in two thousand five, which was the year of every Nintendo game on the DS having the initials DS in their subtitle. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Um, do do do. There were Game Boy Wars, like uh, okay. uh, Super Famicom Wars. Um, Advanced Wars: Days of Ruin, which was wasn't the last that... one, was and that was a DS, right? Ago. Yeah, it was DS. Okay, came out in two thousand eight. And I feel like that, like the like this series got popular on the Advance, so that's kind of why like mm-hmm. they stuck with that. Yeah, but that's exciting. Um, and it, excuse me, it'll be out December third. Yeah, which so. uh, again gives me time between uh, uh Metroid and Shin Megami to maybe get it. But we'll see. Yeah. Or, or probably around then, just not get it and ask for, for Christmas. Which, I mean, that's probably the easiest thing to do, too. Yeah. Uh, so Danganronpa, Rampa, I said that totally wrong, is coming to Switch, and it's exciting. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a collection. It's going to have the first three games, Trigger Happy Havoc, Goodbye Despair, and Killing Harmony, as well as something they're calling S Ultimate Summer Camp, which is a fleshed-out version of the board game from 3 featuring characters from across the series. Um, I've only ever played the first one, and it's just a wonderful game where a bunch of high schoolers are trapped in, like, an alternate dimension high school where Monokuma, the black and white bear thing, um, terrorizes them and makes them decide which of their peers killed somebody and then kills that peer for killing them. Mm -hmm. It's fucking wild. It's got crazy mechanics. Um, it's, it's sort of like that visual novel style for part of it, like, like a Phoenix Wright where you're just sort of talking to, like, people and looking at things and investigating stuff and then uh somebody dies and then you have to figure out who done it yeah yeah they're great though i love those games monokuma's I, yeah i've i've never actually gotten into them i've never i've never played them um so like when this came up i was just like oh i know that guy talking about monokuma and then i'm just like hmm oh that's what this is didn't know that yeah um and it, it's actually called danganronpa decadence mm-hmm. is what it's gonna be called um it's going to be a physical exclusive on the Switch that'll be all all four games, like on, on a single cartridge, uh, or you can buy the games individually digitally. Mm-hmm. Uh, the downside is we don't know when. It's just supposed to re- release later this year. Yeah, yeah. But I will definitely be getting that. I don't know whether I'll get the physical or the digital, but regardless, like I'm definitely getting that and playing through all of them because mm-hmm. they're fantastic. Um. The the end of the, the uh, Nintendo segment was a bunch of Zelda stuff. Um, yeah. Just real quick, either of you guys have any interest in the Game & Watch Zelda thing? I, I mean, I, I, I kind of want it, uh, but I also wanted the Mario 35 year uh, uh, Game & Watch that I never got, so um, I probably won't get this one. But, like, uh, like, we're going back in time now with these Game & Watches. Like, no one's going to actually bring a Game & Watch with them wherever they go, just <laughs> to know the time and play. Like, they've got a fucking cell phone. Yeah, though, at the same time, like, these things are nice because they're including, like, the classic games on them. So it's not like the shitty Game & Watch games. You can actually play, like, Zelda or Mario on these things on the go in a very small form. Mm -hmm. Cobb, Cobb, Cobb. The Zelda Game & Watch is Zelda 2. Like, it's still a shitty game. So, like... It's Zelda 1, 2... It's Zelda, Zelda 2, and Link's Awakening. Yeah, but it's got Zelda 2, so... And that's like, not a shitty game. You're just bad at it. Have you ever beaten it? I've never actually played it. So then, you, no, it's 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 a bad game. I'm just saying. I've never played it. I can't I can't tell you that for sure. Other people love it though. Who? Most of the who? internet. I don't I don't think I've ever found somebody who's loved Zelda two. I know plenty of people that like Zelda two. Like They're not wrong. like personally, but like I see it online all the time. They're wrong. I mean, it's not it's it's no link to the past, but nothing is a link to the past. <laughs> That's true. So a link to the past isn't even a link. Eh, but 
how about that Hyrule Warriors DLC, Rich? You excited for that? I know how much you loved Hyrule Warriors. Look, I I did enjoy Hyrule Warriors. It's just the game ended up being too long, and like I burnt myself out with it. Uh, I, like so, I've cons- so you want more is what I'm hearing. I mean, it's been a while since I played it. And when did that? When did Age of Calamity come out? Was that this past November? or Was it the November before? I have no idea. Because it feels <laughs> like a fucking decade ago, and I'm baffled that was, DLC is just now coming. It was. Um. It was. I don't know. I I know I got it for Christmas this uh, Christmas 2020. Yeah, it came out November 20th, 2020. Yeah, you got it before Christmas, didn't you? You weren't no. playing at the beginning of this year, were you? No, I got it for Christmas 2020. Yeah, so this past Christmas. Yeah. I feel like you played it before that, though. No, I Jesus the, the Christ. Demo, they they had the demo, and it's similar to the demo that they're doing for um Monster Hunter. No, you no, but able... I it does not feel like six months ago you were talking about how long this game was. It feels like 15 months ago you were telling us how long this game was. <laughs> Man, 2020. It's, it's been a hell of a year. I mean, it's, uh, still, it's fucking still going, apparently. Yeah. 20, 2021, it's been a hell of a 10 years. Um, but yeah, like, they've they've announced DLC, but haven't really given a lot of detail for it. I, I, what I want from Hyrule Warriors would be, like, some form of multi multiplayer thing like a, a competitive multiplayer i feel like that would especially if they went like a moba route with it it could be really fucking fun do dynasty warrior games have multiplayer ever uh, they've had it in the past but it was primarily co-op i think there was like a pvp type thing but i don't remember but like i just i i i i don't see a sense in providing dlc to make your character stronger in a single player game that doesn't have new story based content. Like I am not someone who's gonna like I'm not gonna keep playing this game that I've already beaten and have nothing else to get. And Which once is I valid. get like and once I get everything, I'm not gonna really play it again. Unless I decide to play it on like a harder difficulty or whatever. Like but I have to like Final Fantasy seven was the first game that I played multiple times in a long time. And and that's Final Fantasy seven the remake. Like I, I really enjoyed that game. I really enjoyed the play style. And I was like, I can get behind playing this. And then playing hard mode made me love the game more because I thought felt the hard mode gameplay was better than the normal mode gameplay. Really? Yeah. I I f- thought that hard mode was a better game than normal in, in Final Fantasy VII Remake. It, 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 you had to strategize more. You had to think about it more. You had to plan out your attack and you had to plan out your, your stats. and everything. Like, everything mattered. Whereas, like, in the base Final Fantasy VII remake game, shit didn't really matter. Like, at least what I felt. Like, nothing what I was doing actually mattered. Like, stat-wise and material-wise, I just went in and killed things. And, like, I didn't have a hard time with it. See, I definitely strategized playing on normal. And, I like, I didn't struggle through it, but there were definitely parts where, like, it was tougher than others. And I feel like if I had been playing that on hard mode, I would have ended up just, like dropping the game because I wouldn't have wanted to do the same fight like five times. But see, that's like, I think there was only one or two fights so far, and it was like the the murder house that like really took me a while to get. But I also, I love that I love that style of learning and, and, and pattern recognition and stuff like that. You're, you're not into that. But like, I, I just personally felt that like the hard mode was a better game, but that's like the first single player game that I continued playing. I never played um... Uh, New Game Plus for Spider-Man. I didn't play New Game Plus for Miles Morales. Like, I'm not a big New Game Plus kind of guy. I may let me do everything and get the game done and then maybe play it again in five years. <laughs> like, like that's, like, there's so much, like, as you see with just talking about Nintendo, there's three fucking games that I want that drop a month after each other. Plus, maybe kind of Guardians of the Galaxy. Plus, anything we've talked about prior to today. Like I, I just I want to I want to play all the games. I want to experience all the games. Like it's not often that I find a game that I'm just can like sit down and play over and over and over again. Which I like that's valid. Like I get that. I definitely get that. <laughs> um, we do have a little bit of Final Fantasy to talk about, but first, Breath of the Wild two got actually shown a little bit. Yeah, we we got some like actual kind of gameplay and like like at least a look of the world and maybe potential like abilities Link is gonna get. 
it looks like maybe it opens more up to the Metroidvania type style of gameplay that a Legend of Zelda kind of is. So it's it sounds like from what I heard some other outlets talking about, you no longer have the Sheikah slate. Like Link just has those abilities and then some, mm-hmm. which I think is kind of cool because like there was nothing wrong with the Sheikah slate, but to like kind of take that out of the equation and you just be able to like do things is is kind of neat. Yeah. Um. It's also going to open up the Skyward Sword, I guess, because you're going into the sky. And, and that, that was one thing that I thought was really cool, because from what I've read and people are theorizing and things like that, Breath of the Wild takes place is like a convergence of all the different storylines just coming into one hundreds and thousands and millions of years after the end of each timeline. It just turn, essentially eventually turns into Breath of the Wild, no matter what path you go. And Skyward Sword is the beginning of the whole timeline. Skyward Sword starts Legend of Zelda. And so, like, that's, like, a, a neat thing that they're actually kind of bringing that together and maybe makes sense as to why they are doing the Skyward Sword remaster. Yeah, I mean, it does add a little bit to that. And I don't know if you guys caught it or not, but in the trailer for both games, because they did show a little Skyward Sword before Breath of the Wild, uh, there is an almost identical scene from Skyward Sword of Link, like, free-falling from, like, the floating city things. Mm-hmm. Um, to Link doing that almost exact same thing onto a similar landmass in Breath of the Wild too. I, I don't think I caught. Yeah, it was a bunch of um. I the only reason I like I saw the scenes and I'm like, oh, we just saw a scene that looks like that. That's cool. Like it's a similar like aesthetic. But then I saw a bunch of people on Twitter were actually like doing like side by sides of it, and like they are almost identical scenes. But like obviously the geography's changed because it is like a different era. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, I mean, at the end of Skyward Sword, all the sky places drop to the ground. Or at least the main temple that it does. So I don't know if it's all of them or just the main temple. or I can't remember fully. It's been a few years since I played Skyward Sword. And I never it, played it, so I have no I, idea. It's, it's, it's a good story. It's a good game. Eh, I mean, I'm sure it's fine. It's just when it came out, it was, the, it was Wii and it was all motion controls and I just mm-hmm. wasn't into that. Yeah, I mean, and it was it was the Wii Motion Plus, so it was more precise motion controls. I, there there were some difficult difficult aspects to that game, but it was still it was to me it was worth playing. It was so it was wor- definitely worth playing. That's uh, that's fair. I still I like I don't have any intention of getting the the Switch port for it because I'm just not all that interested in it. But I'd say if it ever went on sale, I would get it. But <laughs> it's a Nintendo game. Yeah, like there. There are very few first party games, especially Zelda games, that ever go under more than like forty. Yeah. Like the fact that um Mario vs. Rabbids or Mario Plus Rabbids is like ten dollars right now is only because it's a Ubisoft developed game. Yeah. Like if Nintendo made that in house and just got Ubisoft's permission for the Rabbids, it would still be a forty five dollar game on sale. Trenton, you getting you getting uh, Mario vs. Rabbids? Is it actually only ten dollars? It's fourteen dollars with the DLC. If you buy them separately, it's twenty bucks. Oh, look at that! And like, honestly, like, even if you only want to spend the ten on the base game, yeah, I the, you would the, enjoy it. The DLC doesn't really matter. It's just like its own extra thing with Dunk. Maybe because, but when I looked the other day when we were talking about it, it was still forty. I think it was on sale for forty, and like, I, I was and that was at... only on Amazon. It was on sale. Like, it was still fucking sixty dollars digital through Nintendo. Oh like, yeah, three this is like ago. their E3 sale, just from like. <laughs> we were talking Tuesday. about it. We were talking about it yesterday, and I was literally looking at the Nintendo website and it said ten dollars. Or no, all right, no, it was dur- after Ubisoft stream when okay. it got originally brought up. It was when like, we talked about Mario Mario Plus Rabbids as being a good game. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's when I looked, and it was like forty dollars. Yeah, and I'm like, fuck no. And like, sometime... literally, brand new physical copies are still sixty goddamn dollars. Mm-hmm. Like, the fuck? I mean, that that is what the digital retail price is still. Oh, but yeah. yeah. It's $10 digital. Like, it's yeah. it's a wonderful... It's it's very charming. Like, it's not like it's super, super in-depth, but, like, some of the levels do have a little bit of, like... You kind of have to think about the best way to get through it and, like, what the best characters to have with you are and everything. Mm-hmm. But, like, just be, knowing that you enjoy, like, the strategy tactics style stuff, like... You you would enjoy it, especially if it's just something that you're playing like while you're sitting on the couch watching TV with Sarah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and again, you can't beat ten bucks. I mean, you can, yeah. but <laughs> uh, so uh, Breath of the Wild two. They're aiming for 2022, is from what they said. Yeah, 
I, I don't think it's going to happen, but that'd be cool if it did. I'm I'm a little surprised that it's that late because of Nintendo. Like, not Nintendo's track record of showing things at these showcases is tends to be within the next year. Um, like there, I don't think besides Breath of the Wild two, I don't think there was anything beyond E three next year coming out. I actually, I don't think there was anything beyond this year coming. Yeah, in. no, I, they are very good about sticking to yeah. the majority, and they even say it in like the the um the thumbnail for the video. The majority of the things shown here are 2021 yeah. releases. Um, they always have like their last thing is the thing that's further out. Yeah. And I just think they don't have anything else sooner than this, and they know people really want to see it because the internet got kind of like testy after the last time they brought out the um zelda producer and he's like oh yeah we're doing breath of the wild 2 but fuck everybody we're not talking about that right now here yeah. here's skyward sword yeah and which is also why i think they don't have anything for metroid prime 4 is because they're putting a lot of focus on breath of the wild 2 to get that out as soon as well i mean different different studios but if you remember um metroid prime 4 they literally scrapped everything mm-hmm. and started over like two or three years ago after it had already been in development for like two or three years. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, like they, that's just a different story. Yeah. Uh but yeah, so we got that. Uh so there was no there was no new switch hardware revealed mm-hmm. that people were were rumored rumor milling about. Uh we already said there was no Metro Prime four. We didn't see anything for Bayonetta three. Uh and they didn't really announce any like new new stuff in this either. Like, a lot of this was, like, known quantities. Like, the Super Monkey Ball collection, I don't know that was necessarily out before this, and Metroid. But everything else, like, people kind of knew were happening in one form or another. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, but, like, it's also unfortunate that, like, one of their big things, which is is uh, Rabbids 2, like, Mario and Rabbids 2, like, that, like, their, their, their conference was, their, or their direct or their showcase was so late in the days that, like, it would be, like, Ubisoft was the first one, so of course that was going to be shown first. So like, yeah, and they they, they, they did like, that with the last one too. Remember, um, for the first one, that was like the next big thing, and uh, or the or one last thing I should say. And yeah. Eves came out on stage to reveal it with um Miyamoto. Yeah, and like they both had like the guns from the game, and they took pictures back to back, and it was real goofy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like I, it seemed like I mean Smash is a big community, so like that's a big big deal to find out who the one of the last two of this generation smash characters is um i like I, I overall i thought they had a really decent showcase like whether or not you think any uh, like a lot of this might have been like pre-known or like just it's kind of a waste because it was like remasters like there's still a lot of stuff in here for a lot of different yeah there was definitely i i said it in, in our group chat when you said you really liked it like it wasn't like a knock your socks off show, but no one had one of those. But it was like there was something in that direct for everybody. Mm-hmm. Like no matter what sort of games that, you're into, there was probably a game that you looked at and you're like, I would play that game. Yeah, and that's that's like even like including the stuff we didn't talk about. Like as dumb as it sounds, like Two Point Campus. Like I I've been kind of wanting that because like Two Point Hospital is is a is a stupid fun like like. S- silly sim game mm-hmm. that I've been wanting to get into that they campus. that they put Sonic in. We talked about that a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um. There's like a game Astria Ascending that that was like kind of RPG esque that they only showed a little bit of like within like thirty seconds. Like they had a bunch of little quick things, and then like even like Life is Strange is coming to the Switch, both the remaster collection and the new one. So it's like they they had some big sh- big shows. Even though we might have known some of these already, it was still pretty big to hear that, like, a game, like, Life is Strange is coming. I wouldn't expect that to come. I'm not saying it's too big of a game or too, like, heavy of a game for the Switch to have, like, hardware-wise. But it's just, like, I, like, I don't know. That's just, that seems to be, like, a PlayStation and less of a Switch game. Yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong. Um, do you guys want to talk about Stranger of Paradise? Might as well. Yeah, I mean it was part of E3. Um Now, Rich, you played it you played the demo through twice, correct? Uh minus the final I did fight the final boss in hard mode, but I never beat the final boss in hard mode. But and I, Chaos is the final boss, right? Ca- chaos Ca- Chaos is the chaos. final boss. Chaos question mark. Um they I, I counted, surprisingly. They only said chaos nine times. 
in a <laughs> 45 minute demo? Uh, yeah. Surprisingly, they only said it four times. So eight every times, five minutes. <laughs> eight eight times in the in the final cutscene, or no, maybe maybe seven times in the final cutscene. But like, they only said chaos nine times. Um, it <sighs> scripting's not good. Um, graphically, like the, like the dialogue scripting, you mean? Yeah, yeah, the dialogue is just it's not good. Uh, what you could tell from the 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 trailer. Uh, visually, it's kind of muddy and grainy. Agreed. Especially that um that 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 uh that that tutorial area that's grainy in multiple ways. A part of me thinks that's on purpose, but I don't know because boy, like it, it was bad. Yeah, it's fucking terrible. Like and- I was I was ready to turn the game off in the tutorial because of how bad it looked. And I'm just like, no, let me just get through this. And then it drug on yeah. for a while. And then when it got to that, like, cave thing that you're in, I'm like, okay, this this still looks like an early PS4 game, but it's at least better. And, and like, it, like because it's, like, a darker setting, the graininess kind of looks purposeful at that point as well. But it looks better in the darker setting than it did in the bright lit field of grass I, I, and I mean it, honestly the little bit i saw of you fighting the boss which was a much brighter room even on my phone on twitch looked much clearer than that fucking tutorial field did uh yeah I, like i'll say playing it on my super good tv like the, the rest of that game is not really grainy it's just super black and gray and brown and mm. bland and muddy basically shit looking yeah yeah muddy yeah mu- muddy is definitely a good descriptor for that and it's it, it, and that's just mo- a lot of that is just like the kind of game they're going for it's like a darker look um definitely one of the characters was matt mercer um i can't remember which character but i know was definitely it the main one of- character no, no. It was oh. one of the side characters. It's not Jack. It's not Jack. Jack is the main character. Uh, <laughs> which Jack, Jed, and Ash are the three main ca- are the three characters you play as. Jack, Jed, and Ash. <laughs> anyway, um, gameplay those. I thought it was fun. I I I enjoyed w- how how you play. I enjoyed like the sort of combo system. Um, I kept forgetting that there were special abilities. Uh, on on uh, holding L two, it like I didn't use them my entire first playthrough until the final boss. Um, but like the R one and R two combination is really cool. The um, but like I have a few little like tweaks that they should do for starters. Uh, when you're running around as the mage and you're casting a magic, it should not be the left stick that chooses which magic you're casting. It should be the right stick. Dude, that fucked me up so many times. <laughs> Like, like, cause Cobb, you, you, I don't know if you saw it when I was playing and you probably didn't get far enough, but when you're casting magic as a caster, you hold R2 and a circular reticle comes up with all the spells that you know, and then you have to use the left stick, the one that's for movement to choose which spell to go to, and then you can charge it up and it can go all the way up to the highest form and then you can cast it. Every time I hit that button, my, my immediate reaction was right stick, Same. was the camera stick. Like, that just, that is just, I think it's in so ingrained in so many games when a circle like that comes up in combat, it's the right stick, not the left stick. I also feel like it's not super responsive to the left stick at the very beginning. So, like, I would pull up the menu and maybe hit the left stick and not think it, did, it moved mm-hmm. or not notice it actually highlight the different element yeah and then i would hit the right stick and be like oh no that's not doing anything at all and then go back to the left yeah and hopefully not have been hit in that entire time (laughs) yeah man i bounced off of this so quickly i didn't even know you could cast magic well that's the thing and that's why i said in the chat like you need to get through and get all the weapons before you get the full feel of the game because each weapon is a different play style i felt like the fucking spear halberd sucked shit (laughs) it's it's not good until you get to um, Dragoon, and Dragoon's only good because you have Jump. Yeah, and like, I don't know, the, the spell casting, it's a fucking weird game. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, go ahead, Cop. I was gonna say, for me, it was just, I only, so I got to the, like, that first, like, tunnel, and I got to the end of the tunnel where there was that weird portal thingy, and then I died there, and I just turned it off because I wasn't having any fun with it. Um, mm-hmm. Because it's very much like a, like a, like a from software style combat. Oh yeah. Um, and th- 
those immediately turn me off. Like the combat, yeah. like the from the from games, the combat is very good. It is very good combat. I am very bad at it and have zero fun with it. So like when when I was killed by the thing that comes out of the portal in one hit, I was like, yeah, nope, this isn't for me. Yeah, it's there. There's a lot of uh a lot of learning curve for a game like that. Um, yeah, and it's just. Like, I, I watched you on the bus, boss, like, die over and over again. It's not because you were playing poorly. It's just you get hit once and 90% yep. of your life bar is gone. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you there's stun locked and then he hits you two yeah. more times and you're fucked. Yeah, it's, it's, there's, the, he has an ability of flaming grasp, I believe, is he travels halfway across the world. You cannot block it. You can only dodge from it. Fucking every time I would get to the second part of the boss he would get me with the, he would do it twice in a row and like uh-huh. the fucking second that, time like i literally cannot dodge it yeah I, and the, the the worst part is you have two allies that do fuck all yeah yeah why are they even there i'd rather them not be there yeah they do not like they don't even heal you like if if i'm gonna like at least give me some sort of like gambit system of sorts so that I could tell them to heal me when I'm low and use one of our potions to heal me. Or like the button prompts low. from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, like, there's, there, they just, they go and, like, the, the guy who I believe Mercer was voicing does a couple of punches. Like, they, they did nothing. Nothing. It was pointless to even have them there because you couldn't command them. You couldn't switch to them. You couldn't do anything with them. Mm-hmm. It, it was, like, they, that was the worst part of the, of the, the the demo were your fucking allies. Yeah, it's funny. Like people really like Neo, which was also a Team Ninja game. Mm-hmm. Um, and was a, it was a Souls like, like it it had that same yeah. like punishing combat. But I feel like this game is very much a game that they tried to make ten years ago, mm-hmm. before like people really figured out how those games are supposed to be. Yeah, and like. They just didn't make any changes to it since then. Like, it looks yeah. like it could be 10 years old, and it plays like it could be 10 years old. Yeah. Like, I feel like the game has legs, and it could it, it could be a good game. I I just feel like we got, like, a shitty part of the demo with base-level characters. Like, I, I feel like you shouldn't have been level 1 where, where we were. And, and they had to cut the difficulty down, but they still had to make it difficult. Like, I, I like... Okay. Mm-hmm. I... I I also think like there's there's at least four more weapon types, so probably at least three to four more classes to be able to play as, and maybe more customization with your allies, and maybe more command with it. Like it has legs, but I just I I need I need a better demo because that demo was rough. Oh, and right, this game is like a retelling of Final Fantasy One. Oh God, is that what it's supposed to be? Yeah. It was, so the boss you fight they call garland and i'm like mm-hmm. that name's fucking familiar isn't that the boss from final fantasy one and yeah like and oh, also that's depressing princess sarah is a character from final fantasy one so it's just, the fact that they put names on the warriors of light from final fantasy one and they're fucking jed <laughs> ash and jack like what the fuck <laughs> Also, they look like a bunch of fucking, like, mid-2000s douchebags. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Garland has been a name in a couple of different Final Fantasy games, though. Uh, I, I, I could have swore in 12 there was a Garland, because I, f- I thought he was one of the judges. Actually, I think you're right. Probably. Like, it's... I, I feel like Garland is now just, uh... Let's see, other appearances. Uh, um, Dissidia, O2. Nope, he's not in any other numbered Final Fantasy. Just in Dissidia and, like, Tetra Rhythm and, like... Yeah. Those kinds of shit. But also, like, in the Wikipedia for uh, Stranger of Paris, uh, Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. Also, hence why it's called Final Fantasy Origin. Like, it is a dark retelling of Final Fantasy. Okay. Yeah, it's... It's... Yeah, it's it's a it's an interesting game, um, and I just I don't know I I hope it does good. I hope it's something that I can get into. I hope we get maybe a better demo, maybe something to explore more of the game or more of the the, the classes and the class system. Like it also seemed a little like lackluster with the fact that I played this demo for two hours and had a fully leveled up advanced class with the dragoon. So like, there's gonna be more to it. They give you they gave you a bare bones 
basic level of of leveling it seems which i mean i did i did look and like i saw like the the skill tree and stuff though like all of it was locked off still because you hadn't i hadn't unlocked anything mm-hmm. like it definitely looks like it it they're trying something with it i just mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to end up doing well or being very good. Agreed. Yeah, no, it's... It, yeah, it, it, like I said, it has legs, but it just... if if the, it, 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 It's probably not going to hold up. I mean, come on, the, the first... They released an E3 demo for it that wasn't playable for two... It two took days. them two days to patch a demo so that it wasn't corrupted on a PS5. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh... That's par for the course for Square. Uh... How long did it take for them to fix most of Avengers? And, uh, you could at least turn Avengers on, though. How how long did it take for us to be able to play to be able to comfortably play Final Fantasy fourteen of Realm Reborn without having to log on to remote log on to our computers from work? I mean, and yes, try that, to log on like that is it's true. Just, like two days to fix a corrupt demo. Good on you, Square. Like you finally getting this shit but also, together. Team Ninja is not a Square studio. Like that that's even weirder. Yeah. Like they they're independent from that. Yeah. Right? I'm double checking to make sure I'm not wrong there. No. No, they're team. they're a Koei Tecmo. Yeah. Which I I wonder how they ended up getting um onto a Square game. No idea. Are aren't they the ones who did Neo and isn't that a Square game? No. Oh. No, Neo is a Koei Tecmo game. Ah. I think I'm double checking cuz I might be wrong. Uh it's Team Ninja. Yeah, Koei Tecmo. I mean Team Ninja will do just about anything if you pay them. So that's, I mean, that's that is fair. And like, they don't make, they don't always make bad games. Like yeah. Ninja Gaiden games are good. Um, people really like Dead or Alive. Um, yeah. like, they've they, done they, some of those, like, like they did the Fire Emblem Warriors that I think people liked a little bit. They did the original Hyrule Warriors. Yeah, they did. They did Metroid Other M, which was really good. Like they do, excuse me, they do good games. But was, it's just like Metroid, Metroid Other M Other was M not good. good. <laughs> yes, it was. I thought people hated that. Or am I thinking of a different game? I mean, did you play it, though? That's why I'm asking. I never played it. I I played it. I beat it. It was a good game. It was an enjoyable game. Like, I I don't know what would be bad about it. You know, I just looked. It it has a 79 on Metacritic, which isn't bad. Um, Like, Eurogamer gave it an 8. Um, Game Informer gave it a 6.25. GameSpot yeah, like, gave it an but a, 8.5. But a Game Informer 6.25 is, like, a mediocre game. Yeah, like, but that's the lowest one. Um, yeah. Everyone else was, like, uh, yeah. ishes. And Destructoid was a 6. Point, but, but all right. Yeah, I, it, I swore the general consensus on that game was, what the fuck, why? But Yeah, no, that's I, th- I thought that's what it was, too. But I had just never gotten around to playing it, because by, like, 2009, I just didn't use the Wii anymore. Actually, by, probably by, like, 2008. It was just... It kind of became a paperweight. There was nothing on it I wanted to play, so it mm-hmm. just kind of collected dust. Mm-hmm. But I wonder what I wonder what game I'm thinking of then that was around that era that people really didn't like. So, I, have, I have no idea. Unless it's one of those like um, retrospect, like people don't like Metroid Other M now, like years later, looking back on it, but it initially reviewed well. Uh, <laughs> Other M was 2010, and the next thing they did was Dead or Alive Dimensions, which was 2011. Ninja Gaiden 2012. Um, Wait, there was a Ninja Gaiden in 2012? Ninja Gaiden 3 and Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge in 2012. Holy shit, those were that late? I thought they stopped making the Ninja Gaiden games earlier than that. Oh no, but Ninja Gaiden 2 was 2008. Wow. Yeah, I bet Ninja Gaiden Z was 2014. I don't even remember that one. Neither do I. I hey, Ultimate Alliance 3 is a Team Ninja game, which I didn't know. I didn't realize I thought I thought that was only the DLC. Uh, the Black Order. What? No, it, Oh, no, it, the game was, was actually called the Black Order, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, the game was called the Black Order. Oh, that's that seems like a weird game for them. <laughs> sure does. it's so different. For, like, all the rest of them are kind of like, oh, no, I guess that is like an action game. It's just a different perspective. Yeah. Because those are, they're like, they're not like a like a point-and-click game, right? Like, they're actually like, you, you attack with buttons and... Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're like, yeah, you, you actually hit the attack button, do combos, do different abilities. It's not just point and click. Okay, but it's like isometric, it's not Diablo. right? Yeah, it is the isometric camera view. Okay, that's what I'm thinking of. I think that's why I, I, in my head it's so different because most of their stuff is like just third person action. Mm-hmm. Oh, there, I forgot there was a Ninja Gaiden uh, collection coming out. Yeah. And then Stranger of. So is there anything else you guys want to say about Stranger of Paradise? Chaos. 
<laughs> that's fair. That's that that pretty much sums it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I'm glad I didn't stick with it. Kind of hearing you guys talk about it because it doesn't seem like like I would have. No. Yeah. It, it's it's definitely not your type of game. Yeah, I know for a fact. Like after playing it, it's not the kind of game that you'd be in. Yeah, I could, and like vice versa. Like with like the three minutes I spent in the actual game, I'm like, oh no, this is something that that Rich would want to play because mm-hmm. uh, if it played well, I should say, not necessarily yeah. like. <laughs> You don't necessarily want to play that one, but, like, you want to play a game like that. Yeah, and, like, it didn't, and, and, like, I didn't think it played that bad. It's just there are certain control aspects that I'm like, you know, dodge is always circle. Fucking, not X. oh, my God, that fucks me up so much, too. But, <laughs> like, thinking about it, though, they don't want you to dodge. They want you to use that guard. Yeah, well, but then, you have a well, fucking then, limited amount of the fucking guard. <laughs> no, no. Here's my other. Here's my question. Why not just set that to the fucking guard button and not have a fucking guard button? Yeah. Because why? At that. Like, point, yeah. What's the point of using that guard and not this one that's going to give you the parry? There's like, fucking three different ways to try to avoid attacks in this goddamn game, and yeah. I can never remember what fucking button, in yeah. like, in the heat of the moment, because it's a fast-paced combat, especially the boss fight, like, I fucking constantly am mixing up which button I should be hitting in the moment, and fucking myself. Cobb, <laughs> I don't know if you were listening to the stream yesterday. I was not, but... I was just watching. Okay. Uh, uh, mixed within my constant streams of fucks, this is fucking stupid, and what the fucks, there was dodge a circle, dodge a circle. Every fucking game has dodge a circle, why is dodge X? Like, yeah. It's just, every game dodge a circle. Like, take, take away your fucking guard button as L1, and put that as your spirit guard, make circle your dodge, make X your, um, uh, acknowledge, and then you don't have to use the fucking touchpad to open shit. <laughs> I, I don't really give a shit about I, that. It's the, the tu- weird, the, but, like... The touchpad doesn't really make me that mad, but it's like, you're wasting buttons having two guards that no one's gonna use one of them. Like, I mean, ma- there's also s- no reason the X couldn't still fucking open shit, just because it's dodge. <laughs> Like, it's context-sensitive. Yeah, it's just... I, I don't know, man. It's just... It's... Like, I hope I hope it does good. I, I hope, I, like... I kind of hope it doesn't do good. Don't fucking encourage this company to make more mediocre game. <laughs> well, no, like, I hope... I hope we just got a bad demo. Well, I mean... Yeah, like, ho- hopefully, since this game isn't due out till next year... Because apparently, if you beat the demo, you're supposed to have access to a survey afterwards. Um, so maybe, like, they'll take the feedback and, like, the stuff they're seeing online and actually fix the things that seem to be wrong with it. Because, like I said before, this very much feels like a game that was made a decade ago. Like, go back and look at, like, Mass Effect 1, Uncharted 1, Gears of War 1, where, like, Mm -hmm. those games did things that were new at the time, but then their sequels turned around and made them actually functional. Yeah. Yeah. Like... like, I like this idea of a stylistic retelling of, like, old Final Fantasies, like, Final Fantasy, like, maybe if they can, if they could pull this off and make this an actual good game and it do good, maybe they can get into 2, 6, at least. It's just a shame, like, I would much rather see them do that stylistic take, but keep it at least grounded in what the original games were. Like, not, like, turn-based pixel stuff, but, like, like I said before, like, this... It literally looks like somebody dumped these guys out of 2007. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, shaved head, or not shaved heads, but, like, buzz cuts and leather. And, uh, and look, the one dude was such a fucking bro that his shirt was made to be front tucked. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was just longer on one side than the other. And my last complaint, the, they need to fix the loot drop system because... And, and I need, I should probably send this to them. I played the base demo, normal mode, beat it. I then played hard mode and got to the final boss. I didn't get any better equipment than I did playing normal mode. And you're supposed to get better drops. Quote, to an extent. Which I wonder if that's in the in the full game you'll get better drops. In this game, they only had it, specific it said, gear available. 
it said hard mode, you get better drops, quote, to an extent. No, no, like, I, I, I'm not saying that, that, that you didn't read that right. I just meant, like, I wonder if that text is for the full game when it comes out. And in the demo, it's really just, we only had time to put, like, these five items in the game. I, I don't know. Like, my, my like, legs, my um, yeah, my legs were, like, level eights and nines. But I had, like, level twelves of other things. Like, give me level twelves of everything. Like, and that was my problem. Like, the loot was just, everything was dropping below what I was using. It made progression point yeah no and that's that's valid um but i i guess we're gonna see in a year or so what if the game even comes out in a year like if it if it gets enough bad reaction they might push it back and we might not see it for a while Mm -hmm. it might be one of those games that just sort of like drops off completely and then pops back up in three years with a different title Mm -hmm. like final fantasy versus 13 (laughs) yeah uh, it might just become Final Fantasy 20, and they might redo <laughs> it from the ground up. Yeah, you know, that would be actually really cool if Final Fantasy 20 was just a retelling of Final Fantasy One. You know, I wouldn't be mad at that. Yeah, just not, just not with the dude bro douchebags. No. Um, but it, anything else from E3 that you guys want to bring up, talk about, mention? No. Uh, Hades is coming out on Xbox and PS. And PlayStation, fucking, for some reason, people haven't played that game yet. Play it. It'll be on Game Pass. That is true. It will be on Game Pass. And you know what? If you like roguelikes, like, it is a, it is probably the best roguelike. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. I, I just unlocked a new thing after my 15th escape. Like, that game keeps going. Which is, which is awesome. And the fact that they have so many, like, it, it didn't, it doesn't feel like a lot, like some roguelikes that I've picked up where, like, when you die, like, you're literally just starting over. Yeah. Like, because there's that narrative, like, you almost want to die sometimes just to see what everyone's going to say to you. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, Rich, any, anything else you want to mention? No, no. That's, it was, it was a nice to kind of have E3 back. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see if we will have another one next year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, who knows at this point. But I guess yeah. that will do it for this episode. Um... This weird two week episode where, or two episode week where I guess we uh technically have like four hours worth of podcasts available for people. Yeah. Which um, is generally common. Yeah, E3 is usually the long one because we go over all the shows. Uh but yeah, so if you want to find more of our content, you can head over to www.one questcom You can also help us out by supporting us at patreon.com slash one quest. Can't support us there with dollars, though. You can go to your favorite podcast platform like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon Music. Rate us, review us, subscribe to us. Those things all matter. You can also find us on social media, facebook.com slash onequestonline or at one underscore quest on Instagram and Twitter. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash onequestvideo. And you can always send us an email to social at one-quest.com. And you can also probably uh, go watch uh, Rich stream stuff on his Twitch channel. What's, what's your Twitch, Rich? Twitch.tv slash B underscore Walnuts. Uh, the day the release of this release, Thursday, I believe tonight I will be playing Division 2 on this thing. Um, Division 2 with friends. Uh, I might play on uh, Friday, probably some City Skylines. I haven't decided yet. Cool. And depending how uh, how the weekend goes, I might see if you guys still want to check out that um, Operation Tango thing. Yeah, if I'm free, uh, I would definitely play it. Yeah, uh, the only time I'll have free is Sunday, um, so it, maybe in the mornings or something on Sunday. I don't really know if I'll be able to play any otherwise. Okay, well, I mean, we can always wait till the following weekend or something like that, too. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we'll be back next week with something else to talk about. Thanks for listening. Bye. See you. Bye.